Hello, my name is Jeff, and this is Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north. And you might remember a few weeks ago, um, in some cases actually a couple of months ago, I attempted to propagate a couple of varieties of Streptocarpus plant, and I also had a go at the Diplodenia sanderi, or the Manzavella vine, uh, the one with the nice red flowers on it. And today I'm going to show you how those are furred and uh, what I'm going to do about it. So I'll just swizzle you around and let's have a look. And we're back. So, this one was Streptocarpus titania. Now, for some reason, I stupidly didn't write the date on it, so I'm not quite sure when I did that one. I always try to do that, but for some reason, I didn't. So, what have we got here? So, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And out of the seven, well, you can see we've got two there, which is approaching 28% success rate um, so these you can see how they've got a nice new growth on there these others I don't think anything's going to happen to them they're, you can see yeah they're, they're rotted this is what happens at the bottom once they've gone black like that um, it's too late they've rotted off um, and they've all they've all began to rot so that is actually, I'm quite happy with that. You know, I've got some, some free plants there. I haven't had to pay anything at all for it, only, you know, for the compost and the time. Bear in mind that it's the wrong time of year to take these leaf cuttings. It's December. Um, I think I probably took these either early November or late October. The Streptocarpus, certainly th this particular variety, this Titania, it's not an all year round variety like the crystal ones and it's not in its growing phase. If I'd have taken this in springtime or summer when it was in its growing phase then I probably would have gotten uh, a higher success rate. But I'm, I'm quite happy with that for this time of year. So I'm, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these out and I'm going to pot them up into, into some small pots and uh, I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. So over here on the Diplodenia Sanderi. Now, again, because, the, because these, they don't, they're not the kind of plant that will, they don't seem to mind drying out for a little bit. But you, you know that they've got, you know they've begun to to take when they when they start popping up right and you can see there's a bit more vigor uh, they've begun to grow some new leaves there new leaves there this one did have some new leaves on it and over christmas i had a few people in the greenhouse and i don't know i don't know what happened i don't know whether somebody touched it and they, they dropped off i don't know but they are i mean they're easy to to knock off anyway maybe i did it with the with the lid that's probably more more likely scenario so it did have some new leaves, so I know it's beginning to grow anyway. So these are fine as they are at the moment. I'm just going to, what I've done to kind of harden them off, they've, they've been over here in the propagator there. Um, so they've had some bottom heat, about 18 degrees Celsius. So a few days ago, I took them out of that and I left them on here. So what I've done is I've let them get used to not having the bottom heat, but I left the lid on. My next job is, the next stage, is I'm going to leave the lid off for a few days now and then eventually um, I'm going to take them out of that and just put them up on the shelves so that they're completely climatised to the greenhouse. So the, as far as I'm concerned, uh, 16th of November I took these cuttings, that's job done for those, that can stay in that pot. Uh, that one, those two, I'll leave them a little bit longer, uh, probably another, I don't know, six weeks, maybe even two months. Once they start growing, then I'm going to separate them out, put them into own, their own individual pots, and then I can dot them around the greenhouse, and uh, we can have a bit more of this. There it is. I'll bear in mind, like I say, it's the end of December now. You might even be seeing this in early January. I'm not sure when it's going to be published, uh, but it's still in full bloom, and it has been right through from when I bought it in about, let me see, it would have been, it would have been April, because I, I bought one for, for my friend's birthday, and I bought one for myself as well a special offer you know what can you do so uh, you know I, I would love to see that in more places around the greenhouse you know it may be that this particular corner is the best corner for it to be the best aspect but I don't know I guess we'll see it'd be nice to have one over there in the other corner as well to kind of match it and then they can both meet in the middle and go go across the roof there so that's what I intend to do with that so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to set you up and just show you uh, the kind of root system I'm going to get from here and me repotting it up. 
Now, just before I show you the repot, um, I want to show you this one. Now, this one is Streptocarpus polka dot purple. This was the one that everybody liked, and I did this one on the 26th of the 10th, it tells me on that label in there. And as you can see, nothing, not a thing. Uh, I don't think these are going to come now. Um, just looking at them now, you can see that they're beginning to rot towards the bottom. Uh, that they're not, they're not going to come these now. It's it's too late. You can see the black at the bottom. Once you get that, you know it's it, it's too late. This could be why I've only got one of these varieties. I think I've probably tried this one before, uh, but I have a couple of new methods which I'm going to try. So I'm going to dispose of this one, and I'm going to try another one, and I'm going to do that in another video and show you the two the two methods. The the new the new to me anyway. Um, they're not. The, one of them is like a slight twist on the way I've been doing it. Another one is a completely new method to me. Uh, so I'm and I've got that off the uh, the British Streptocarpus Society or one of the videos. So I'm going to film that one and take you on the ride with me and let you have a look at how I do it. I know there's lots of videos on these things, but as I said right at the beginning of this greenhouse project, I'm just going to film what I'm doing. If people find it useful, great. If they don't, well, you know, that's up to them. I'm just going to film what I'm doing. So I'll just clean this up and I will get on with potting the other two up, the two new ones, and then I'll film separately uh, how I'm going to try, try again, have another attempt at getting some more of these polka dot purples before I pull all the leaves off altogether. Okay, so I've got two of these eight, ten centimetre pots. Clean them out with a brush. Uh, obviously, I've recycled them from use for something else. I'll give them a spray with H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, just to make sure that uh, there are no bugs in there, nothing left in there, any viruses that I'm going to pass on, and we're ready to go. Okay, so I've got a mixture here. I've got uh, John, Innes, John Innes number two, which is a seed and potting on compost, and I've got uh, probably about a third of vermiculite here which I believe is good for streptocarpus in that it keeps a little bit of the nutrients from flowing out, from, from leaching out of the pot and it also uh, retains a little bit of moisture because they do like a little bit of moisture. So I'm just going to give that a mix up. Probably easier to do with your hands really but my hands are wet and I don't want it all to stick. There's a tiny little bit of bark in here. Not, I've not put that in on purpose. That's just come from <clears throat> when I've been repurposing other little bits and bobs. Or bits like overspill from repotting. It's not, it's not come from uh, pots that's already been used. <clears throat> so I'll put that to one side. We'll get our Streptocarpus <clears throat> Titania. And let's have a look what we've got. So... Obviously, the ones that are rotted, so I'll get those out of the way. I'm quite happy with this. I think this is, you know, it's free, so it's better than nothing. There you go. So I'll just bring that up. You can see we've got a little bit of a root system, nothing major, but it's enough. It's enough to, to go into a, its own little pot. And for some reason, when you do put these up into their own pots, they tend to romp away more than they did when they're in uh, like a, a seed tray like that. I'm not sure why, because you'd think they'd have the whole run of the tray, but they just they just do. They just seem to. It's a bit like orchids when when you get orchids. There we go. That's all right. Little root system underneath there. When you get orchids and you fix the roots down, if you've not got any roots on, or if you fix that plant and get it secure so it's not wobbling about, they seem to grow roots much quicker than if there's a little bit of wobble in them. Uh, same thing for doing cuttings from plants. If you go and put them down the side of the pot rather than in the middle, they tend to work more, tend to strike uh, at a much better success rate. Um, I'm wondering whether, you know, the roots are very fine, certainly initially, and any bit of movement stops them from forming properly. You know, get that plant anchored and it'll grow roots much more easily. So that 
We'll go on the garden now. I'm not going to use that for anything. I'll just get that out of the way. Uh, I'm going to put a little tiny bit of grit in the bottom of that just to aid with drainage. I have a, a bucket over there of horticultural grit, which I just use for this kind of thing. Um, it's only small and, and it's useful anyway. If it once, once you've finished with it and you chuck it on the garden, it's really useful for that. So that's and it's not you know there's, it's not rocket science. This there's not a great deal to it, but if you don't find it interesting, that's fine. Move on. Fast forward. Oh, it's there's not a huge amount of roots on here, but it's obviously you can see that they are growing. So get them in their own pot. I really just need to place them on the surface there and kind of push them down a little bit. And just sprinkle a little bit of media around it. Hopefully that will be enough for them to get going. Oops, what have I forgotten? Little bit of grit in the bottom. Okay. This is how I end up with uh, in my main pot. Uh, sorry, my, name, my main bag of John Innes compost. I end up with all sorts of bits in it because, as you can see, I've made far too much, and that's all go back in the bag. <laughs> so again. I'm not really going to make much of a hole there because there's only there are only slight roots, small roots. Push it down, just sprinkle a little bit around there. And when I water it, what I'll do is I'll water the leaves as well just to get all that compost off. So I'm going to make a couple of labels. Make sure I remember to put the date on it this time. Get the watering can. Just clean them off, clean off around the side of the pot and if you find that the media drops which it usually does once you've watered it especially when it's dry to start with you can always just sprinkle a little bit more around and top it up again And then of course, you get the pot dirty again <laughs> and the leaves dirty again. Right, so that's that. So I'll use that one, strep titania. I'll clean that off because it's, uh, it's got a little bit wet <clears throat> and I won't be able to write on it with my marker. So I'm gonna clean that off, write on it with my marker and put them in the set. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two because you forget what they are put it in the pot and we're done so that's uh, potting on streptocarpus titania from the leaf cuttings so i'm going to end this video here and what i'm going to do is i'll start a new one off and i will show you my two new uh, not not two completely new one of them is one i've done before but with a slight twist to it the other one is a new one to me and we'll see if that has any better uh, success rate at this time of year like I say the best time to do it spring you know even even in summer you can do it fine at this time of year is the worst time but very often we do these things when we've got time to do it and now is when I've got time to do it and as you can see you know that some of them <coughs> you will get some some successes uh, which is great so I will hopefully if you like this video please give it a like you if you're, if you're not into YouTube and you're not a YouTube creator you will possibly not know how valuable these likes are in terms of um, YouTube picking up, YouTube's algorithm picking up the number of likes and the, and the amount of interaction in terms of comments that these videos get. Uh, it will help other people to find my videos which will help me to get subscribers which will make me do more videos which hopefully eventually will get me to that magical thousand mark and you never know, I might actually be able to get a little tiny bit of money back from the amount of uh, investment I'm putting into this. So if you think that, think that I'm worthwhile, it's been worthwhile, then please give it a like, pass a comment, and uh, hopefully we will aim towards that magical figure. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll struggle along, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!